Welcome back to Fire to Fork. Now the other day I did a poll on Instagram to get uh, people to vote for the meal that they wanted me to cook next and that meal was roast pork belly. Now I went out and I tried to cook roast pork belly and I cooked it and it was edible but to be honest the whole thing was just a bit crap. Just none of, nothing really landed. Believe how much I've screwed up in this recipe. This is just next level. If this tastes crap you won't know because it won't make it to YouTube. Crispy bit of pork in the dipping sauce. Not happy with it. It's fine. Yeah. So um, I'm gonna keep practicing that one. I wanna nail it, I wanna get this really right because if everyone likes it so much, and I love it so per personally, um, I wanna make sure that it's absolutely right. But in the interim, what I'm gonna do is put up one of the, I think it was top three, easily top three, it might've even been number two, um, requested thing, which was a simple one that I can absolutely nail now. Um, and that is bangers and mash. Obviously this is gonna be a slightly gourmet bangers and mash, but bangers and mash nonetheless. So let's get started. Also, I've always wanted to, um, do a, to film in front of a Boab, and I haven't done it yet despite living in the Kimberley for the last eight and a half months. <laughs> So um, finally, I'm getting to do it. But it's also bloody hot. We're just near a creek, which I'll show you in a minute. But um, uh, let's get this awning up. Much better. Now looking around, there's a whole bunch of really nice tinder here. So previously I've just been using fire lighters in my fire pit, but I think today I'm gonna use a bit of this natural tinder. Obviously I'm going to be careful not to set the rest of it on fire, but absolutely use it to get my fire going. Oh, easy. Oh, will you look at that? Oh, a Colonial. Oh, how did that get there? Definitely not trying to get sponsored or anything by Colonial IPA. Please send me some IPAs, please, please. And also everyone at home, use the hashtag fire to free beer on anything that you see with Colonial and tag them, the taggy things here. We're gonna get me sponsored. We're gonna get me some free beer. Look at Freddy's bugger in the heat. Oh, it's mother's milk. Oh. We actually hit um, grog bands today, so this is my last can. So I've got Chris from the Four Wheel Drive shows coming up to film some stuff. I'm going to be at the Four Wheel Drive shows. Full Wheel Drive show in Perth from the 6th to the 8th of November. By the way, I'll be cooking every day, free food, come buy merch, come and say hi, have a chat. Um, maybe even have Fred there. Most importantly, this won't be there, but hopefully, if things go well, my new car will. So um, I've already bought it. Um, it's in Perth and um, I'm going to try and do some mods to it and get it looking good and um, hopefully show it off at the show. Anyway, I'm totally off topic. But so Chris is coming up to show, shoot some stuff at the Full Drive show for Channel 7 and I actually specifically got him to bring me up some Colonials because I can't buy them and my life's not worth living without them. So yeah. Ah. Anyway, let's get back to it. Okay, first things first, the mash. So start off with, I'm just going to grab a handful of spuds, a bit of salt, uh, they're sort of medium sized spuds so let me go for, let's go five little spuds. Uh, these are charisma potatoes, or charisma, charisma? it's charisma but incorrectly spelt, C-A-R-I-S-M-A. -A. Um, they're like a russet potato, they're pretty good for mashing and stuff. So just chuck them in some water and I'm chuck that on the boil. That's pretty much impossible to overboil those spuds. You can get them really, really mushy and like falling apart. You'll also notice I didn't peel them. If you want really, really creamy, perfect mashed potatoes, you should definitely peel them. If you're like me and you don't actually mind if they have a little bit of sort of, I don't know, let's call it a rustic feel, um, with a little bit, some little bits of skin in there, um, 
then leave it on. A lot of the nutrients is in the skin anyway, so it's probably better for you to leave it on. Uh, so that's how I do it in the bush. I just can't be bothered peeling every single time. Now, while I've been waiting for that to um, get warm, I uh, put the drone up and had a bit of a look around. Uh, it's a beautiful area. The tide's kind of out at the moment, so you don't really get to take get to see what this creek's usually what this creek's like in in full force. It's the same one I did the uh, mud crab episode on. Um, but look, have a look around. It's um it's a bloody beautiful little spot here. As you can see, it's not shit here. Uh, it is warm, but it is not shit. So uh, I'm just gonna leave those on for a little bit longer and then in a minute I'll start getting the sauce ready. Now the onion gravy. Oh, it's got a bit of sand on it. I washed this after a picnic, uh, just using beach sand as, as abrasion. So, for abrasion. So, one onion. Just get it, cut it in half, and then slice it, don't dice it. You want these long stringy bits. Now you want to add quite a lot of butter to this, so um, because we're going to make a roux later on. That's about two tablespoons of butter, I'd say. Something like that, maybe a bit, bit more, a bit less. Um, a lot of people keep saying, why do I get in and out of my fridge so much? It's because it's hot. So I don't want to leave this butter out and let it get warm. So I don't bring all my ingredients out the whole time. I'm happy to just go in and out and grab things as I need them. Shit. I just realized I forgot milk. Uh, I'll make do. And I'll put that in the fire. You would have seen in like every other episode, Fred runs around and has a great time, but here it's just too damn hot to run around. So I think I'm gonna get the chair out and have a bit of a sit. All right, they're pretty brown. More butter and a little bit of flour now. So, a bit more butter in there, so I've got a bit of liquid to create this roux. And I'm just going to add in, yes, I'm not using my hands, I'm the only one eating it. Probably like most of a tablespoon of flour. You want to just cook that in, because if you don't cook it in, it uh, just tastes like raw flour. So you've got to cook that flour a little bit more. So probably got a, I don't know, a tablespoon and a half of flour in there now. That's just going to thicken up and cook for a little bit. Let's have a quick look at these spuds. They're, they're getting, getting soft, but they're not there yet. Uh, that third pot just has water in it, so I'm going to put something in there later. Just thought I'd get the water boiling ahead of time. Shit, that looks like it's burning my GoPro. Don't do that, please. I break enough shit, I don't need a broken GoPro as well. I might go put you back up near the car. Right, that roux looks like it's pretty good. It's browning a little bit in the butter, so all I'm gonna do is add a little bit of um, stock. That's just a cup of stock. Uh, beef stock I, I've used. Um, you can use chicken or veggie if you want. I just prefer beef stock in this particular example. Um, uh, you don't have to use one of these pre-made ones. In fact, if you're doing long distances and traveling, I recommend stock cubes or the, like the little gel packet things. They're good. Um, they just take up heaps less room and don't, don't go off, but I'm 45 minutes from home. So I got the easy option. Uh, 
Yeah, next step, snags. So I'm gonna use my little travel bry, which I love the Osbry, I love it so much. But if you're limited on space, I gotta say, using this thing has just been so freaking good. Honestly, ridiculous. I love the size. I, that, that doesn't leave my car ever. It's a little bit dirty, so I'm gonna give a quick clean off. Okay, wire brush. As usual, it comes with like a proper frame and everything to use it with. Um, but I've already got the big grill there, so I'll use that. Speaking of big grills, there's um, something special on the way. So thinking about buying one, maybe just hold out a couple of months. Uh, I went to my butcher and I got these nice big fat pork sausages, which uh, look delicious. Go to, your prop, go to an actual butcher. A whole bunch of people have actually said, oh, you haven't figured out that Tender Spot in Broome is the way that, where to get your, where to get your meat. They know my name at Tender Spot. Karen and I are like this. And chuck them on the fire. I'm gonna put them in a relatively low heat spot because we've got plenty of time and snags actually do really well cooking slowly. This onion gravy is really thick now, so I'm just gonna take that off. Looks delicious. Alrighty, so got my spuds, felt them in there, poked them with a fork and they just sort of crushed in half basically. So I'm gonna drain that out. I do love the integrated drain holes in these. One less thing to carry. Uh, strainer. <laughs> They're getting all, <laughs> just as I was saying that, the drain holes are all getting clogged up by a bloody potato. Now, usually I would add a whole bunch of um, milk to this, but as I said before, I forgot it. So, instead of having milk, I'm just going to have to use butter, and probably lots of it, and that will work just fine. Uh, if you don't have a potato masher, you can use a whisk, you can use a fork, you can use whatever. Uh, if you're gonna do mashed potatoes, bring a potato masher. It's not that hard. I don't carry one in my car, but if I have any any plans to do a meal like this, I absolutely chuck one in. Hell, I would buy one in town in the trip just to do it. They're like two bucks. God, they are so creamy already. So I've added a bit of salt. Mm, it's delicious, bloody delicious. Perfect, that can go to the side. As I've said in previous videos, or maybe I haven't, mm, I like to wash things as I go, because as they dry on, they get much harder to wash. Now I may as well just throw on this last ingredient, uh, which is, I'm, it still amazes me. It's, I think it's absolutely hilarious how much of a divisive ingredient this is. But peas, people hate peas. Uh, okay, fair enough. I, I didn't know that. Um, I like peas. I like coriander too. I like a whole bunch. Of, I like pretty much everything. I just sort of have favorites. Not a huge fan of fennel. I don't love too much truffle. Other than that, I like everything. So, um, just didn't expect it. Didn't expect such a, Huge reaction to putting peas on things in the comments section. Oh, it doesn't bother me at all. I don't take it personally. I just think it's funny. So, a few frozen peas. Obviously optional. <laughs> you hate peas, don't put peas in. Uh, I love having a freezer for stuff like this. If you don't have a freezer, uh, tin peas, great. <laughs> just in case you ever wanted to see what I'm looking at. Here's my cameraman. There's my camera. Hey bud, you being helpful? How's the shot look? Good? All right, cool, thanks mate. All right, those snags are so close. I reckon they're three minutes away. So what I'm gonna do, this is still actually hot. Um, I'm gonna take my mashed potato game to the next level. And to do that, you need some Parmesan and a grater. And Something that was suggested to me in the videos and uh, the comments a whole bunch of times was add an egg. So I tried it for the first time last night. Gotta say, I'm a fan. It does work. So you crack the egg in late 
and it cooks in there in the heat. So. That is so good. Mm. Okay, I think my snags look ready. So I'll clear this out of the way and get plating. Whoo! Okay. Just heating that those um, mashed potatoes up a tiny bit on the fire. They just uh, they weren't cold, but they just weren't quite as hot. Oh shit! Oh, I was boiling water in the hands. Um, <laughs> not quite as hot as I would have liked. Perfection. Oh, now I've cooked six spuds. You obviously don't need six spuds. Um, but the reason I did that was because uh, we actually made this last night as a practice run and we made way too much sauce and too much mashed potato. So we have room for a whole bunch more spuds. So yeah, that's why that's happening. Bit of sauce or gravy. Oh, look how thick that is. It's beautiful. It's a very mild flavored gravy. It's just sort of, I mean, you know what it goes in it's not nothing is particularly strong um, which is nice you can have a you can really slather your stuff with it some peas some gratuitous b-roll Before I eat this, I think I should um, make a kind of, I don't know, I guess an appropriate drink to have with it. Last time I had this, um, I was camping in Scotland um, in a cool little Land Rover Defender uh, 90, uh, which obviously drove like a small tractor, um, but you know, looks very cool. And um, we had a fantastic time, but this sort of thinking, what, what did I drink then? And the time uh, is drinking a lovely, lovely wee dram of a glo local Glenmorangie. Now, uh, I'm not in Scotland, I'm in Australia, so I'm going to drink an Australian whiskey. Uh, no affiliation, I have actually done work for them, but um, this is not a sponsored thing, this is just a bottle I bought of Dugat. Double, beautiful little Western Australian whiskey, so a bit of that. I've put it in the freezer deliberately because it's really bloody hot and uh, no one likes a hot glass of whiskey. A few bits of ice. And actually, you know what? I'm going to put a dash of soda in it, make it really refreshing. Those snags. Those snags are amazing. Wow, well done, Tender Spot. Um, yeah, it's got a really good porky flavour. You have to use a pork sausage for this. Don't use your Italian sausages or don't use barbecue sausages. If I see someone tag me with barbecue sausages in bangers and mash, no, wrong. Pork snags, gotta be. Um, that is absolutely bloody delicious. Um, it's really sort of hearty and uh, warming in a weird way. Like warming, like, you know, it's comforting, not warming. Comforting is probably a better word because um, in case I hadn't mentioned it 700 times this episode already, it's hot. I said it'd be gourmet. I kind of lied. It's nothing particularly gourmet. It's just a, a basics recipe for how to make this. Um, it's a very simple meal. It's a total crowd pleaser. This by the fire late at night with, you know, a, um, a glass of red wine or give it to the kids and all that kind of stuff. It's a total crowd pleaser. You can make it for 15 people without much effort. Um, it's really good for, for bulking out. Um, but look, that's the end of this one for me. Um, as usual, if you want to support the channel, links to all the products I use uh, down below. Some of them I get a little cut for, some of them I don't. Um, so it's kind of a lucky dip there. <laughs> um, but 
everything I use, I believe in. Uh, so I don't think that I'm using crap just to get a cut. That's not how I work at all. I use things, then I approach the people, and then they, yeah, anyway, it gets, don't worry about that. See you in the next one, see you next week. I'm gonna finish this and have a wee, a wee drum. <laughs>